guys, Corey Smith here, Corfex. Just wanted to make a quick video. Um, sorry, I'm kind of in my kitchen here. I'm just doing a bunch of things, trying to get as much shit done as possible at once. And uh, so I figured I would just do it here. I was doing stuff. But um, I wanted to cover a quick topic today, uh, trading with a trading plan. One of the biggest, you know, probably the biggest number one thing that determines the difference between someone who's going to be successful in trading and someone who's not. Um, there's a reason that the um, success rate in trading but Forex is somewhere between, uh, I've seen studies that show anything from 5% to 15%, more so on the 5 to 10% side. So there's a reason 90% of people fail in this, um, in this industry. And just like the same rate for small business success rate, is about 80 to 90 percent uh, failure, sorry, vice versa. Yeah, the 89 percent failure rate for small businesses is the exact same thing that carries over to this with trading, and that is lack of lack of preparation plan. Um, if you look at the statistics for small businesses, it's like uh, 80 to 90 percent of them fail within the first year or two, and then after that, the number drops like by half. And then like a small business that survives two to three years, there's like a 40 percent chance of failure rate at that point. And the, the numbers drastically change. And that's because those that can make it through and have the capital to make it past those those trial periods are the ones that make it. And unfortunately, most people that start small businesses and that start trading retail accounts don't have the capital to do something like that. That's why they're looking into venture something like this. So um, same reason that kills both is is the same reason that, you know, uh, that I'm covering here. And that's the lack of preparation. And in trading, that's having a trading plan. Uh, I bet you half the people watching this video, 90% of the people trading retail accounts right now, if I asked you right now, what, what's your average pip count per trade, win and loss, what's your average pips you win per trade, your average pips you lose per trade over over period of trades, you know, your trades, your average win and loss ratio, your average, um, how many percentage of trades you win and lose as, in shorts as opposed to longs, um, any of these questions, you know, uh, your average risk to reward payout per trade. Not what you go into the trade with hopes of, but the actual results. What your average win is as opposed to your average loss in dollar value, percentage, pips, any of that. I guarantee no one knows the answer. There's a select few that do, and that's why they're professional traders. But um, so that, it's like asking a business owner who just opened a pizzeria. Um, you know, How many pizzas does he have to sell to, to make a profit or break even on the day? Or if they do marketing, you know, how, many, um, how, many, how many marketing dollars does he spend on an ad? that results in how much money spent in their place. You know, if you spend $400 on an ad and you get $500 worth of sales, people coming in saying it's because they saw that ad or however you track it. Um, it's, it's like a small business owner not knowing that, you know, or not knowing how much costs they pay for things as opposed to revenues they're bringing in selling them. It's like if a small business owner didn't know the answer to that, that's just absurd, you know, and people take trading the same way. You, you think like this is a business, this is a profession. This is something that, you know, takes years and years to master and that most people fail at. Why, why would you not be prepared? Why would you go in and just take this trade here because, you know, it looks good. It, it's a nice trade. Oh, this support hit here. Oh, this looks nice. I, I'm going to take this trade. Or, you know, you just, you don't know your numbers. You don't know your, your profit to losses and your percentages and your pip counts and, you know, how long you're in a trade for. You have no idea the average length of your trade. How do you know... How long to hold or how long to short? What if you're in? What if you're losing trades? Your average time in them is two days, and you're winning trades. Your average time in them is twelve hours. And what's that telling you? You're letting your losers run, and your winners you're cutting short. That's the exact thing that kills people. That's the exact opposite of what you want to do. You want to have an average holding period of let's say three days profits, profiting trades are an average of three days. Your losing trades are an average of a day. That's that's the number you want to see. You know, you're not letting your losers go against you and keep going, and you're letting your winners turn into bigger winners. That's trading. So as far as having a trading plan goes, think of it as, as a business. Think of it as being your own business, right? Every single part of it should be detailed and written out. Every part from the very beginning, from the charts you're looking at to the exact uh, stop loss target and entry price you make and exactly how you're going to manage it, exactly what factors you need to line up to make a trade. The, the, Best thing you can do when making a trading plan, for one, every trading plan needs to be entirely different because everyone's personality is entirely different. You can't have two of the same trading plans. Yeah, you can trade the same style and strategy as somebody, but you need to tailor it to your personality. 
if you're a very impatient trader and you know you can't let trades hold for more than a couple hours you're not trading the four hour or daily chart you're not swing trading holding trades for a few days or a week or so you, your patience is going to eat you alive you're going to close every trade out before it turns into a winner you're going to you're going to eat yourself alive and kill your account you're going to have to tailor it to your personality if you're a very strategic analytical patient long-term waiting person you trade four hour and above you can't trade an hourly 15 to 30 minute chart you're, you're getting eaten alive by the, the moving so fast going against you so fast or in your direction so fast and how inconsistent some things are at the lower time frames you just you, you can't you have to tailor it to your personality and the biggest bit of advice there is for beginning traders as far as making a trading plan goes it doesn't have to be the best trading plan ever made make a set of particular rules start off with goals you have to start off with anything that you want to succeed in in life with goals short term long term the reason you're doing it what you want to make a week a month a year where you want to be six months from now where you want to be 18 months from now where you want to be 10 years from now write it down and read it every day write it down know what it says read it every day start with goals figure out why you're doing this where you want to go with it um, and then start going to your routine set your daily routine I made a video about daily routine if you haven't seen it yet go down and watch my video about having a routine another huge thing write your daily routine out right the night before, if you're trading U.S. Open in the mornings or something, write out the night before your watch list of trades that are starting to set up things that you're looking for, or there's news coming out in this pair, so be watching it at, at this time the next day. Set out, set up, you know, make make your routine set in there. Get your routine set up. Write exactly what tools you're going to be using. You know, like if you're using the, uh, I use the Finviz um, Forex performance chart, shows the strength and weakness of, of overall currencies. Um, have all them down there. If you use position size calculator, which you better be, you better have that on there. Um, and then go into finding your setups. Just go into marking your charts. Go into detail how you draw your support and resistance lines, how you draw your trend lines, exactly what technical tools you're using, exactly what fundamental analysis you're using. Write it all down, everything. It should be a 20-page paper by the time you're done with it. And to be truthful with you, one of the hardest things you'll ever do and one of the toughest things to ever make because it just takes a lot of time. And you're going to make it. And... I don't care if you've been trading for 30 years and you're profitable and you're making a plan now or if you just started trading you're making it, your plan is going to change without a doubt. That's why you make a trading plan. You have to adapt and change or, or you're, you're dead. You're dead in the water. So after you set that up, then start setting up um, exactly what you're looking for in a trade, what you're looking for prior to going to the charts. If you have a, something you analyze first before you go to look at the charts, pair strong currency against a weak currency, for example, then you know what charts to look at. Put that in there. And then go into your trade setup, your, your stop, your entry, your targets. Figure out exactly how you're going to determine them. Do it the same way every single trade, every single time. Position size calculator, the same amount of risk every single time. Determine how much you're risking per trade, how much drawdown you're allowed per week, per day, per month, before you take a step back from the charts, look at your trading, look at what you're doing wrong. All this needs to be detailed in your trading plan. Every aspect of everything to do with trading needs to be detailed in there. Set up your trades. Set up your stops, your entries, your target. Do not ever take a trade without the three of them determined. Or you might as well just give your money to the market right then and there. Just open an account and just put it all on. Go to a casino, actually. Put it all on red when you walk in the door. Your odds are probably higher there. Um, so follow the plan. Uh, write it all out. Put exact. The, the point of having a trading plan is a few points. One of them is to eliminate emotions. Emotions are what kills traders. Fear, greed. All of this, all of these two emotions specifically create all of these different problems and emotions. Revenge trading, um, entering trades just because you're bored, boredom trading. That's greed. That's greed 101. You're getting greedy. You're bored. You're sitting there staring at charts for too long, making setups up in your head. Find a, a, a strategy and a setup that you have to have exactly execute to enter the trade. This, 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 and this need to be here to enter the trade. And then have some other conditions that don't have to be there, but that make it even better. So if you have a couple trades lining up at once, and they're both good, they both all fit your, your criteria, have a couple extra conditional things on the side, and whichever one's got one of them, or don't more of them, whatever, enter that trade. And then um, have mat risk management once you're in a trade in your trading plan. Like if you're, um, for example, I trade with the trend. So I don't do set it and forget it. I don't just have a set target, let it hit it, and my whole position's out, I'm done. I have set targets. I cash out half of my position when it gets hit. I trail the second half so that if, if the trend continues strongly, breaks out, whatever, I get to ride it longer. 
um, have that all detailed. Exactly follow it the same way every single time. If you're not using the same consistency over and over, okay, go back to time. Sorry, I'm sidetracking all over. But if you go back to with the, the, psycho the psychological aspects of why you have a trading plan, if you have it as objective as possible, I'm only looking at charts in an uptrend with price trading above the 20 SMA. Okay, now boom, right there you have a sample of charts that are clear as day. They're objective. It's exactly need that to be there. Otherwise, there's no, oh, this one's an uptrend because it's making higher highs and higher lows from a four hour. But then if you go to the daily, oh no, it's sideways or in a downtrend actually. So just eliminate all that. Make it set rules that are very simple and easy to follow, black and white. Someone else should be able to pick up your trading plan and follow it exactly. It, it doesn't mean they'll make money off it. Their personality won't be the same and it'll probably be really different and they won't be able to execute it the way you do, but they should be able to carry out the steps and follow it exactly as you have it written. So it eliminates your emotions. It eliminates your subjectivity. It eliminates your greed, your fear. It takes all that out of it because you're following a checklist. You're like a pilot flying a plane. You get on, you follow a checklist. You do this, 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 and that, and you go. That's it. There's no emotions and, and psychological aspects taking over and trading for you. That's what kills trading. That's 80% of trading is psychological. So if you can make a trading plan that you follow step by step like a robot, trading gets boring when you're successful. That's, that's the whole, I mean, it's still always fun if you love trading, but it gets that whole roller coaster and, and emotional craziness from the beginning when you're throwing on a lot with a $200 account because you got leverage from a broker in Macedonia or whatever that gives you crazy leverage and you overextend yourself and you get that adrenaline pump because you're in the trade and you blow your whole account 10 seconds later. That's, that's not trading. Trading is following an executed plan, having a 60 to 80% win ratio, winning two to one risk to reward on every trade, doing the exact same setup day in and day out, and making a living off of it. Yeah, it's still fun. Yeah, it's still a blast, but it's not adrenaline junkie. It's, it gets tedious and boring at times until the markets change and you got to adjust or you trade a news event and you get a little thrill. But it eliminates your emotions having a step-by-step -step checklist to follow. Um, it also creates consistency. You're doing the same thing over and over and over, and consistency is the only way to improve. Consistency equals improvement. Because if you're consistent with the way you carry out things, you can see what you do wrong to know how to improve. You can figure out very quickly. You make a trading plan right off the bat. Have it be, it has to hit a trend line that's been touched two times or more. It has to hit a support zone on a fib line in an uptrend, whatever. Have that be your trading plan. Just pick it and go with it. Back test it. I'm usually on back testing. I have another video on that. Back test it, demo it, and see how it goes. See what happens in it. You'll start to realize, okay, I'm my strengths are um, I'm good at seeing this. I'm very patient. I'm able to let the profits run in this, but my weaknesses are, you know, I, I'm not uh, available at my computer long enough to be able to adjust my trailing stop, or I'm not able to wake up in the middle of the night to adjust my trades because I'm working overnight, whatever, whatever the reasons are, you'll find your strengths and weaknesses and you'll adapt. You'll change this rule to see that it fits you better. You'll change that because it'll see that it fits you better. And then when you lose 10 trades in a row, because you're going to, when you start off, you're going to have something to look back at and see why you're going to be like, okay, well, maybe if I don't wait for it to hit the trend line the second time, I'm realizing the third or fourth time price is starting is, is working out more then you adjust that okay instead of after two trend line hits three trend line hits then I enter or you say okay you know what this trade uh, stops me out a lot of times when I hold it hold it through the Asian session I'm just gonna get in in, in the London open and then by the end of the US session I'm gonna close out before that or you, you'll start to realize that you'll you'll have a place to go when your trades aren't working or where something's going wrong there's always going to be times, whether it's you or the markets, adaptation needs to happen. And the only way you're going to be able to is by having a set trading plan to follow and to be able to go back on and, and look at what you're doing wrong. Um, goes hand in hand with the trading plan is journaling. I'll go over that in a different video. But the journal you look at with the trading plan and you determine what you're doing wrong, where, how, why, and you figure it out. But if you don't, if you don't have a trading plan, you, you don't trade. There's no reason to be trading it. Everybody, I did it for two and a half years, knows you need a trading plan. And you've heard it a million times. You've seen it a million times. Yeah, I'll make one when I'm profitable. I'll make one now. You're not going to be profitable without one. Never. 
You're not ever going to be. Maybe you will be for a week, two weeks, a month max. You're not going to be profitable for a year. You're not going to be profitable six months without a trading plan. You're not going to. You're really not going to. Uh, I mean, there's some traders that have been profitable for a long period of time with a set strategy that they have memorized, that they haven't actually wrote into a plan, but that's very select few, and eventually they will write it down into a plan or they're going to markets are going to change, something's going to happen, and they're not going to be that great. Or they'll never be as good of a trader as they could be. I still, I still continue to adjust my trading plan to this day because over a certain amount of sample size of trades, I start to realize things. I go back and analyze my trades, and I'm like, oh, shit. With that bullish engulfing candle, if I set my order 20 pips or let's say halfway into the candle, if I have a bullish engulfing candle and I set a buy, a buy limit order, halfway into that candle. I've realized the majority of 80% of these trades, price has gone against me. One out of 10 trades right when you enter goes right in your direction and never looks back. So if I've, I've realized if I set my entry 10 pips or 50% of the candle below, don't have to jump in right away, wait for price to retrace back to that, trigger me in, bang, 10 pips on every trade. You make 10 trades a month, it's 100 pips a month different right there. Just, just adjusting that tiny little thing, just adjusting, uh, realizing, oh, wow, if I don't enter right to close that candle, if I enter a slight retracement on it, my risk to reward better. My pip stop loss is a lot shorter. I'm lot, I've am got more room to the target now. Look at that. It's that simple of a thing. And having a trading plan and a journal is the only way to determine that. It's the only way you're ever going to. Otherwise, you're just shooting dark. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going to get a, a couple trade win streak. You're going to have the best feeling in the world, and then you're going to lose eight straight. You're going to blow your account, and you're going to think you're the worst trader in the world, and you're going to quit. That's what most people do. They quit. This is how you stop yourself from quitting. If you're trying to figure out what to do, what you're doing wrong, how to fix it, blah, 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 make a trading plan. Start it right now. Don't start it tomorrow. Don't start it next week. Don't start it next month. That's how shit gets pushed off. It doesn't get done. Make a trading plan right now. Start making it, and no, you'll never stop adjusting it, ever. Once it's set and it's profitable, good. Let it ride. But always look back, analyze your trades, compare it to your plan. Make sure you're not deviating from it. You could be a pro trader for three years trading a plan, being profitable, and start realizing you're deviating from the plan. You're starting to do shit outside of it. If you, if you don't keep the plan to always follow, you won't know what's happening. You'll start losing and you won't know why. You have to have a plan. All right, guys. Well, I'll get back to some more topics later on, and I'll cover the trading journal at some point. I just wanted to think this is an important topic to cover. And, um, you know, one of the biggest things that differentiates a pro from an amateur, so... Just uh, make your plan, trade your plan, you know. Once you make it, you have to stick to it. It's the other biggest thing, you know, you can't deviate from it at all. If you're going to spend the time and effort making the plan, stick to it. Even if it's a shitty strategy, a shitty plan, adjust it as you go. Get the shit out of it and start making it profitable. All right, thanks, guys. Hope you liked the video. If you do, comment, like, share, follow me on Instagram. Take care.